So as we saw in the video and my demonstration as well, when you finish defining your application, Microsoft will give you a bunch of codes that you don't really have to be worried about all of them. All you need to do, know where to go and what to add. Basically, right now in this application, there are some to-dos that got generated for me. You say add construction code in here or do what and do, do not do what. So automatically, they give you all those guidelines that you need to know about. Let's go ahead and launch my application, build it and execute it. Since I've chosen the edit view, now I have the capability to basically modify, you know, a specific document and change it as well. So right now I can type in anything I want and basically save that application under a specific type. You see, I did not specify the file type. That's why it doesn't know what to type it as. So I call it, for example, testme.txt and basically save it. Create a new application. Let's go open that test me, the text, and you see it opens it. So I created a notepad application without doing anything, and I can claim that I'm a C++ programmer, just as a joke. So let's talk about the concept of a class wizard. Class wizard simplifies using MFC classes and make it easier for us to perform some programmatic tasks. What we can do with it? We can create new classes. We could drive from many existing base classes. We could actually handle the messages. Let's take a look at some of the example. I can retrieve the class wizard by selecting menu, view, and then select class wizard, or choose control W accelerator. By choosing the class wizard, you could basically add a new class, as I said, or you could drive it from an existing class, existing base class, and you could handle the messages. Basically, you could add a function, as you see, and that automatically adds that particular function in here. By the time you're going to basically add a specific window handle in this scenario, it automatically gives you that specific scenario in regard to adding a macro for it. You see, it adds a macro and maps it to that particular handle. And all you have to do, say edit code. And automatically, you go and add your own code in it. Of course, we take these steps over and over again and we talk about it more and more. I just wanted to show you that the class wizard is pretty powerful. So control W, that's one of the features. Add class, drive from an existing base class, and add handler. That was the first bullet I was talking about. Not to mention that you could map messages to the function associated with the window, dialog boxes, control, and so forth. You could create or delete message handling member function. As I mentioned before, I created that, I can delete the function. The beauty of it is, it doesn't delete your code. Right now, if I go back in here and say, for example, this is my future code. If I go ahead and delete this function, as you see, it didn't delete this particular line of code. Just because you might make a mistake, click on a specific section of the code. Or you might want to associate that line of code with another procedure. Microsoft doesn't delete your work. They just delete the association. It won't be called. It's just like a text standing right there. Nobody will call that a specific function. So these are the advantage of it. Determine which message already have a message handler and jumps to that handler. Overrides MFC virtual function. Defines member variables. Simplify working with ActiveX and database classes and add automation methods. Again, we will discuss the class wizard a lot more in chapter six. You also have a wizard bar, which is very similar to the class wizard, but is available right here at the title. They call this a wizard bar. As you see, this is a small little icon for it. You can basically get many of those functionalities in here. Some of the functionality that you have on class wizard and the wizard bar, which are common, is that you can create a new class. You can drive from an existing base class. However, you cannot map messages to a function associated with windows, dialog boxes, or controls using the wizard bar. You could also create or delete, basically, message handling member functions that are available in here, add window message handler, or determine which mes messages already existed. So you could basically see all available messages in here. But you couldn't do other tasks that class wizard does. In other words, class wizard is available just for quicker access and instead of going through the class wizard you can go through the class wizard itself. In, instead of class wizard, you could go with the wizard bar, which is available right on top of your IDE. 
So not to mention that it shows the class list, member list, and the filter list. So that would be the action build. Again, we'll talk about in chapter six a lot more. So let's talk about how to manage our projects. As we talked about throughout this section, part of the workspace window, we have the class view, resource view, and file view. You do not see info view, part of Visual Studio 6.0. And instead of that, you have MSDN library. The info view only belongs to Visual Studio 5.0. So part of the class view you could display the project terms of classes, not files. Basically, they are showing the header files to you, as you see. By the way, some of them header files, some of them actually the C++ files. You can see the title in here and shows exactly what file you're opening. You could take a look at the resource view, which allows you to modify objects in a graphical way or modify your resources, as you see. You have file view, which gives you the capability to view the files that are available part of your projects. And finally, info view, which is being removed from Visual Studio 6.0, and instead you have MSDN library, which you can retrieve it from help context. So as far as the class view, you could add new member functions, you could add variables and add virtual functions. If I click on a class view, you could add member function, member variables, virtual function, as I said. And every single one of them, they have their own graphical representations. The project workspace directory depends where you have saved it, you're going to have some files in there. Let me go and demonstrate that for you on the sample apps that I'm making. As you see, there are a variety of different files got created. One of them is uh, the DSW, or Developer Studio Workspace, DSW. The DSW is going to be created when you save a new project or update the current project. The project file of building a single project would be DSP, as you see in here. So one workspace could have more than one project, basically. Then, of course, the workspace option files, which contains information about the local organization and appearance of the project workspace. Of course, you can get more information from the MSDN library for those. You could open an existing workspace project, if you will. You can actually go down in here, and you use your recent workspace files. As you see right now, I'm in module three, demo two. I can actually go and open a module three demo, and that would give me the first class that I demonstrated for you, which is a multiple document interface. So basically, you could retrieve the information in any way as you wish. As far as the build options, you can actually go under the project, under project settings. You could set some of the options in here. You could build it for debug, which gives you some more symbols for uh, debugging purposes. Or you could go with release. Release doesn't give you the symbols. In other words, for debugging purposes, you need the debug, which is designed for debugging purposes. In other words, the performance is not the case. You want to make sure that the symbols are being loaded. Otherwise, you see only the assembly code. Release was optimized for performance, so you don't get any debugging capabilities. So after you finish debugging and everything looks good, before you ship the product, you should convert it back to release and then compile that on the release version and give it to your customers, perhaps, or departments within your company. There are a variety of different tabs in here. You have the general. You use that in order to use MFC in a shared DLL or a static DLL. Throughout the MFC app wizard, if you remember, you could choose to, to go with an MFC shared version or a static. You can change them in here again. So many of those answers that you have already given to the wizard can be changed here, part of the options of your project. The debug set work in the directory for a project and provide program arguments at runtime. That's the debug section in here. You could actually specify the program arguments, perhaps. This section is extremely important. You could associate the debug program to be something else besides the Visual C++. For example, you want to debug ActiveX control. You can associate it with the ActiveX control test container or a third-party program, which we'll talk about in course 1015. Or C and C++ section, which gives you the capability in order to access a wide variety of settings, including warning levels, generating browse information, exception handling, and so forth. That would be right in here. 
some of the parameter switches could be set by going through these options in here. So of course there are others like link information, resource information, and many more, which we'll discuss it in other courses like 1013, 1012, and 1015. As far as the resource editor, as I mentioned before, you have a variety of different editors in here. You could manipulate any of the following, accelerator, dialog box, icons, menu, and so forth. I just want to go through it very quickly. You have the dialog editor, which allows you to modify the dialog box, put any kind of controls in it, and add message handler for it. You have basically the menu editor, which gives you the capability to create menus and associate message handlers for it. Again, we, we talk about menu editor in chapter eight, not to mention that dialogue editor, we'll discuss it over and over again throughout the entire course. We talk about accelerator editor, which gives you the shortcut keys, just in case if you don't want to use the mouse. Again, more in chapter eight. Toolbar editor gives you the capability to add toolbar into your you know, application. We'll talk about it again in chapter eight. Version information editor, that's pretty simple. You can actually add version information part of your EXE. So if someone goes anywhere in here and basically they are right clicking on your executable and then they can click on a version tab, they can see exactly what you have placed in there. And basically you have a string editor which gives you the capability in order to list all the IDs. In other words, if you want to change the caption of a specific ID, or if you want to change the name of the ID, and you have used this ID in many different places, you don't have to change it over and over again. You change it only in one location. So that's really a helpful tool for developers. So with the string editor, you can find a string in a string table, add a string table entry, delete a string, move a string from one segment to the other, move the string from one resource script to another, change the string or its identifier, and add formatting. Imagine. You have already created a nice, good-looking string tables in one project. You can actually import it to another project. You don't have to recreate it from scratch. That's pretty much saving a lot of hour for you. You don't have to recreate the wheel again. Remember that you cannot create an empty string table. If you create a string table without entries, it is deleted automatically. So if you create one, you should have at least one entry into it. Not to mention that you have graphics editor like icon and basically bitmap editor that you can go and design your own cursors and icon. I've already demonstrated the gallery for you. You could basically add any ActiveX control into your application and take advantage of it. There's a video in which shows how to add a splash screen into your application, which you do have it on your CD. I'd like to take some time and show you that video.